Happy, beautiful day. It's Pete Cohen here. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Psychologies Magazine. It's 2 p.m. It's Tuesday, and I'm delighted to be here. We're talking about you and your new identity. Yep, I'm going to give you a new identity. So just imagine I actually could. I could give you a new identity. What would you want that identity to be? Who would you want to be? if anything was possible. So what we'll do is we'll wait a few moments to let as many people find this broadcast as possible. But this is always one of my favorite times of the week because I get to connect with people globally, people from all over the world. So that's always my first question when we do this. I would love to know where are you in the world? I'd love you to engage in this content. Just imagine that you'd paid $1 million to get the information that I was about to share with you. I bet, I bet I'd really have your attention. Chances are I might have a bit of your attention, but not all of your attention. I don't know, you might be driving, you might be running, you might be having a conversation with someone, or you might find that your attention is starting to fragment and you want to go somewhere else that you can get something else, a different feeling. My challenge is always when I'm presenting to keep someone's attention because I think it's one of the most valuable things that you own. And I promise you what I'm about to share with you is so powerful. If you take on board what I'm going to share with you, it will change your life. So I'd love to know where you are in the world. I'd love you to engage. Let's see how many countries. I can see there's 60 people already in right now. And I'm waiting for someone to comment and say, hi, I'm Shirley from Argentina or I'm Gary from Washington, USA. I would love to know where you guys are. I'd love you to get involved. I want to thank Psychologies Magazine as ever for giving me uh, the opportunity to connect with you. So if you're ready, say I'm ready. At the moment, I don't know that anyone is here at this moment in time, even though I can see there's 66 people. There you go. So which countries do we have? We're going to bring all, all of the countries up on the screen. Uh, you can say who you are, where you're from. Tell us, my, my father-in-law, who's on the computer here, tell us which countries have we got coming in right now? Malaysia. Malaysia. Fantastic. Happy, beautiful day. Where else? Uh, UK. UK. Yeah. Whereabouts in the United Kingdom? I would love all to know. Yorkshire. Where, Yorkshire's in the house. Stafford's in the house. Where else? We got uh, Glasgow. Glasgow. So the UK is being very well represented today. That's awesome. Vietnam. Vietnam is in the house. Isn't this amazing that right now we've got people in Vietnam, we've got people in all over the UK. Where else? Massachusetts. Ma Massachusetts. Or try spelling that uh, in the USA. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. It's such a, an amazing opportunity to reach out to people all over the world and to be able to connect in a, in, a, in a meaningful way. Because even though we're in different parts of the world, I think we've all got a number of things in common. And I really want to talk about that today. Any other countries, Jerry, that South are coming? Africa. South Africa is in the house. Whereabouts in South Africa? I have, a, I have a business in South Africa, actually. And I've been there a couple of times. I've been to Durban. I've been to Cape Town, Johannesburg. I've been to many townships over there with the business that we have. Any other countries? Ethiopia. Ethiopia, another African country. This is amazing. Awesome, awesome. Anywhere else? North Wales. North Wales. Where's that? I know exactly where North Wales is. I'm wearing the color of the Welsh right now. So, guys, if you're ready, just say I'm ready. If you're ready, just say I am ready. Ready for me to share with you some information about your new identity. So, here's my first question. If you could have any identity uh, that, you, that you could choose, who would you want to be? If you could create an identity. When I was a child, there used to be a program called Mr. Ben. And Mr. Ben, it was a cartoon, Mr. Ben would go into this shop and the shopkeeper would show him different outfits. And Mr. Ben would put on the outfit in the dressing room and then he would come out and he would take on the persona of the, the outfit. So it'd be a policeman or a deep sea diver or a milkman. He would become that personality and as children this is something that we did a lot you know maybe we pretended to be an actor i remember seeing rocky three coming out of the cinema 
imagining that I was Rocky and running down the street or seeing the film Chariots of Fire and literally coming out of the cinema and just running. I became the character in my mind. And when we look at this word identity, what do you think that word means? What do you think the word identity means? Because I think a lot of people don't know what it means. The word means the state of being the same. Okay? So how many days do you wake up every single day doing the very similar things of the things that you did the day before? The same habits, the same thoughts, the same actions, the same results. Yes? That's what most of us do, and that's how most of us go through our life. Very few people, very, very few people around the world, wherever you are in the world, very few people have big goals, big dreams, big things that they are working towards. Very few people do that. Why do you think that is? We could have a very, very long conversation about that, but we're not going to talk about that right now. What I want to say to you is this, human beings are very protective of who they think they are. I don't know if you've ever, ever done any personality testing before. I'm not a big fan of it. I studied psychology and I've been around personality testing, whether it's Myers-Briggs or the DISC, or there's a few, and I've looked at them, and then I've looked at the science behind them, and there really isn't that much science behind them that really validates what they're saying that it's like horoscopes in many cases in terms of people actually wanting to be to told this is the type of person you are this is the type of personality that you have now if that is what you're told then often what we do is we keep acting that way and the word identity means the state of being the same and we wonder why we keep on creating the same results, the same outcomes. And realistically, come on, let's be honest, right? Where do you think you're going to be next year? Do you think it's quite possible that next year you will be in a very similar place to where you are right now? Just a little older, uh, maybe a bit wiser, maybe a bit more unhealthier. I don't know. I think it's very, very likely. But what we've all gone through with COVID and with other, you know, the economy, most of us now are being forced into a position where we, we might change. Isn't it crazy that it kind of takes a disaster, kind of takes a diagnosis, a prognosis for people to rise up and go, this is enough. I, I don't like this. I want to change. And my point in talking to you about this today is, look, your, how, what is your identity? Your identity to me is how do you currently see yourself as you look at yourself in the mirror? And I dare you to do this today. Look at yourself in the mirror and look at yourself and think to yourself, how do I feel about where I am right now? What do I see in myself? Who am I being? In many cases, who we're being is we're being our past. We're being our past identity. We're being who we think we are. And it's strange that it takes a diagnosis or a prognosis or a disaster for many human beings to rise up and go, enough's enough. Enough's enough. I need to change. There's something out there that I want to do. And I want to ask you this as someone who really cares. What do you really want to do? Who do you really want to become? Because unless we stop, right, really stop and ask some questions, 2020 is going to be like 2021. But the problem with that is 2020 has really rocked so many of our worlds and made so many of us start looking at things differently. And our worlds, I, I think that what this has done is made many people realize just how vulnerable the world is. But it's also made people appreciate certain things. Because as a psychologist, I can tell you that human beings are goal oriented There is a field of work called theology. It comes from the Greeks, uh, where the Greeks said that we are teleological creatures. We need goals. Everything that we do, everything that human beings do is for an outcome, is for an aim, it's for an end. There's an end. We want something. Everything we do. So today, with whatever you do, I dare you to think, what's the outcome I'm looking for? 
Even if you go to the toilet, what's the outcome that you're looking for? You know, if you go to sleep, what's the outcome you're looking for? That you wake up the next day refreshed. Everything we do is for an outcome, for an end. And human beings really get unhappy and miserable when they're not achieving. When they're, when they're, they're getting some satisfaction, but they're not really achieving. What is it that you really want to achieve? What is it that you really want to do? What is it that you want the legacy of 2021 to be? Or even the legacy of your life? Because if you don't do anything, then nothing is really ever going to happen. It's just going to be the same. So, you know, I'm saying this to you, you know, and I'm going to continue to show up here every Tuesday on Psychologies Magazine. And I'm looking for people who next year want to go on an epic quest, want to go on an epic journey to be the hero in their own life as they carve out a new identity as, and this is where I'm going to do some work on this next week if you want to come and watch, <clears throat> to help you create a relationship with the person that you are becoming. Does that make sense? To have a relationship with the future you. Now, of course, there is work involved in this, but I want to ask you what, right now, what is driving you, right? What is driving you? Most people are driven by their past. Most people are driven by the circumstances they find themselves in. Very few people are driven by where they're going. We are goal-orientated creatures. If you want to delve a little bit deeper into this, I personally have created um, a goal assessment. It's absolutely free. It's at goals.mi365.me. It's actually uh, in the description on this, in this post, goals.mi365.me. There's a video on there. It's 11 minutes. And then you can click and you can do my assessment. It will take you 10 minutes. And I promise you, it will show you how likely you are. It will show you whether you have goals anyway. But then it will also show you how likely you are to achieve those goals. Look, you're obviously here for a reason, right? You're obviously here because <clears throat> I'm not talking about the reason for being on Earth. But yet, I'd love to know what the reason is. And, and this is really important as we start to wrap this up. There's a very famous book. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Very famous book. Viktor Frankl was a, a prisoner uh, in a concentration camp, and he was a psychiatrist. His family were killed, and he had this theory. It was called logotherapy. And basically what he was saying is that the, everything, loads of things can happen to you, but ultimately you choose how you feel. You choose how you react to the situation. No one can dictate how you feel. Right now, with everything that's going on in the world, we still have a choice. What he also said is, if you are not driven by a compelling vision of the future, then your present will be meaningless. And I think for a lot of us, we don't allow ourselves to have as much meaning in our life because we're not driven by a compelling vision of where we're going. And I can tell you, I'm driven by a hugely compelling image of where I'm going, and that's why I turn up every day and do the work that I do, because I want to help people like you do the greatest thing that I think you'll ever do, which is evolve, to grow, to discover, to make this world a better place, especially if your outcomes, your aims, and your ends are about helping yourself and helping others. I think it's time for us to think bigger. I think it's time for us to go bigger. And I'd love to know from all of you here, what's your biggest takeaway? What is your biggest takeaway? If you want to help Psychologies Magazine and spread its word, then share this. Have you taken any value from what I've just said? Has, has there been an exchange in value? Because if, if there's been any exchange, then feel free to share this post. Share what Psychologies Magazine has to offer the world, which is experts and uh, you know people sharing expertise, sharing wisdom, sharing tools, sharing techniques, sharing strategies sharing a place and environment where people can grow. And I'm extremely thankful to Psychologies Magazine for giving me this space and this opportunity to connect with you wherever you are in the world. If I can help any of you, don't hesitate in, in reaching out. Don't hesitate in following me, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram. Let me help you. 
I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram every Friday on Psychologies Magazine. And for those of you that don't know my name, this is my name, Pete Cohen. Go and check out that goals, goal assessment. It's absolutely free, absolutely free, but it's extremely powerful. I designed this with a, a very well-known psychologist. So uh, thank you. Any questions? It's good to see you know, people that have stuck around. Some of you have had you stuck around from the beginning all the way through to the end. Uh, that's really, really awesome because they say that we're now in a three-second society. So you've just broken the rules. Uh, but rules, as Arnie said, are made to be broken. Don't break the law, break the, break the rules. So have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, rest of your day. Wherever you are in the world, I will go back and look at everyone's comments. And uh, once again, I want to thank you for being here. A great life, it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by design. And human beings have this incredible capacity to design, to evolve, and get better. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Go and check out the goal assessment, goals.mi365.me. And um, I'll see you soon. All the best. Have a great day.